So, gotta run a couple errands. This is a really nice uh, early January day, um, around 42 degrees, which is much warmer than usual. Um, it doesn't seem to be there's there's some wind, not not too much, but yeah, I'm gonna go for a ride, uh, run some errands in a couple of different places. So you gotta watch. So there's still ice out on some of these roads, so I have to be a little bit careful. And okay, let's get going. <clears throat> well, I'm at 82.6 volts. This is probably going to be like around a 10 mile total ride. So I'm on top gear uh, in the first, or I'm in the first gear. Uh, or I guess that's the lowest gear. And I believe it's a westerly wind, so I'm just gonna keep it in the low gear. So one thing I noticed, or one thing I'm doing is just to be more efficient. So I'm just gonna keep it in first gear and go around 15, eight to 20. Wow, that, that wind is... It's not, it's not cold, but that wind, that headwind. Man. There's <laughs> quite a lot of cars. I saw my neighbor, she went out on her bike, on her regular bike as well. So it's a nice day. It's, so people are taking advantage of it. Um, I'm gonna ride to, I'm gonna go take the trails on the electric bike versus going on the street. I think you've seen the street route quite a bit now. I'm gonna go on the trails or on the on the bike trails. And when I say trail, I mean it's a paved trail, so you're not supposed to go on there with your electric bike, but I mean there's not gonna be anyone there. And it's a little change of scenery since and it's all, since I'm going to the headwind, I'm not gonna go too fast anyway. I think these uh, e-bike speeds are okay. It's not too dangerous for people that are actually on the trails. And I see there are a couple of people walking, people are running. You know, it's just overall a very nice day. Uh, which, so now it's the New Year's, so Happy New Year's everyone. So I'm gonna talk a little bit about the, the final plans for this bike. Um, if you look, if you follow, if, no, if you saw some of my other videos, you know that this is a 72 volt, 3,000 watt cyclone e bike with a lithium ion 72 watt, uh, sorry, 72, 16 amp hour battery. So it has what's that? Around. 1.2 kilowatts of power or of, uh, of battery capacity. Of course, that's just that's laboratory um, power readings. It's not the actual. The actual power would really depend on how you ride the bike and whatnot. Now, I'll probably get that right now because I'm going pretty slow. I'm going around 14 miles per hour. Again, this is the headwind. I'm in top gear trying to be as efficient as possible. I don't really need to be efficient. Uh, I could really, you know, just blast it if I wanted to, or just, you know, gun it, but, you know, I'm just gonna go on the trails. It's a nice day, I just wanna relax a little bit. I don't really need to get there as fast as I possibly can. Um, and as you can see coming up, there's still, some snow on the ground and ice. You now I really, I gotta really be careful not to fall or anything like that, because that would be bad. And this is a nice trail. I ride it. When I, okay, so I'm just gonna. I'm just gonna pedal. I'm not gonna use the motor over this patch here because I don't want the. I need to really control the rear end of this bike. I don't want it to spin out and I don't want to fall. 
I don't want to go too fast over this either, so I'm just gonna pedal manually and just take it easy. Okay, so now I'm no, I can juice it again. So I put around this, I guess in terms of this, before I go to the, to the plants, I have around, what, 500 miles on this at the moment? Maybe a little bit more. Maybe a little bit less. And the kit has held up pretty well. I don't have the best mechanical skills, so I don't think my build quality is as good as someone else's. The only, the thing I would do differently is, well, I guess I would have just gone with the rear hub. And this goes back to the whole debate about which is better, a rear hub or a mid-drive of the same power capacity. Okay, so gonna slow down and just pedal this part. A rear, a rear drive or a mid drive of the same power capacity. So I definitely know I can, I'm always 100% certain that the mid drive is just from a power perspective, cruising perspective, is more efficient than a rear drive, a direct drive, <coughs> a brushless non geared rear drive because of the cogging effect of uh, of that motor or of the rear drive motor and you don't you don't have cogging with with the mid drive well, let me just get past these people and not talk they think I'm crazy Wow, it's a lot, you see there's a lot of snow, holy shit, there's still a lot of snow. Maybe I won't go on the trails, because if the trails are like this, it's going to take a long time to get to where I'm going. Okay, yeah, I won't go on the trails. Yeah, I'm pretty sure the rest of the trails are similar. Uh, so I can go to my destinations, destination pretty much almost entirely on the trails. But if they're like this, it's just gonna be too slow. Cause I'm going like seven miles per hour over that that stuff. Yeah, but anyway. The mid-drive is more efficient because of just how the freewheel system works. So you think about your entire ride from just okay, let me cross this here quick if you think about your entire ride from starting to cruising so you need to get over that initial power or sorry the uh, inertia of standing still so that requires a lot of power so in both cases I think the motors are pretty much the same maybe on a <coughs> uphill like this the <coughs> the mid drive might be better if you're in a if you're in a better gear okay so then you're at speed let's say whatever that is and you're still on the power to maintain that speed so I think in that case both motors are pretty much the same again I think the difference in efficiency comes when you're actually really coasting. So let's just say you want to go, you want to maintain a 25 to 30 mile per hour speed. You're going 35, you accelerate it to 35, 
and then you stayed around. And this is different, of course, for different power e-bikes. You're at 35 on both motors. So now you let off the juice. And immediately there will be some cogging effect. And it will be more pronounced on the bigger, you know, 3,000 watt, 1,500 <coughs> 1, watt rear hub motors. So that cogging effect will eventually slow you down much more than just a normal bike coasting at 35 miles per hour or starting to coast at 35 miles per hour and that's exactly what a mid-drive does especially the cyclone because once you let go of the juice the motor spindle stops the pedal crank um, sorry this is been a meant gear the pedal crank stops and it's just on the rear wheel or sprocket or wherever sprocket you have on your on the rear. It's just like a regular bike. And there you're just gonna have so much more efficiency. You're not gonna lose speed as much. You can go further than a rear hub motor. So why not just get a mid-drive then? And the reason why I, why I think a why I if I had to do it again, I would just got in a 15 watt, 1.5 kilowatt or 1500 watt rear hub. Sorry, it's, it's pretty windy. Rear hub motor, and then I would have put like a 3,000 watt controller or a 72 volt you know, high amp controller on it, swap out the controllers, and you know, I'll be good to go. Uh, you know, I would, it would just be, the installation would just be much more easier. Um, and, I was not Yeah, the installation is, will just be easier. The maintenance will be easier. Um, here with the rear hub, with the mid drive, I'm always constantly checking the, ch the chain alignment, oiling the chain, uh, making sure that the mid uh, the hose clamps I have on the motor are pretty equal or are, are tight. Um, so that's my one solution or one one my one change to the standard kit is I'm putting a double hose clamp system onto the mid part of the of the uh, of the motor to keep it to take some stress off the the motor mounts. Um, I think what that does, yeah, it just takes out some stress because the one of the plates, well, one of the motor mount plates is pretty small, and a lot of people like to reinforce. Uh, between the two with some type of um, you know strut or some type of block or aluminum block or something like that uh, so I did decide to do that I just for me I just you know did a double hose clamp switch something and make sure that it's tight you know it's really simple just use a screwdriver to check to make sure it's, it's really tight when I when I ride um, and you know it's it does come loose a little bit after each ride, so you know you just have to just keep uh, tightening it. So it's a little more maintenance compared to a rear hub, which is pretty, pretty much zero maintenance. Um, but the other thing about the rear hub is where its advantage is that if you have regenerative braking, maybe that regenerative braking makes up for the fact that you can't coast as well as a mid drive. I don't, I don't know, because I don't, I never had a rear or a rear hub motor with regenerative braking before. And you see a lot of videos of the guys with like the big power, uh, who have, you know, who show the power display. 
when they when they go for a ride and they show the the power that they're getting back from regenerative braking. And you know, I just I don't know, I wonder if it's if it equals the power that you lose from cogging when you're coasting. I don't know. So anyway, that's kind of the, if I were to, that's kind of the lead up to what I wanted to talk about. Uh, if I were to do this over, yeah, I will probably not get the mid drive because it's a little bit more difficult. I had to wait for a pretty long time. I had to wait a pretty long time to get all the tools too. But with the rear hub, you know, I could just throw that guy on, make sure I order a pair of uh, what's the thing? What it torque uh, torque brackets, and you need a pair, not just one for uh, you know anything greater than a thousand watts. So if I were to pump three thousand, four thousand watts into your rear hub motor, one torque arm will probably not be good enough. I know people. I know a lot of the big uh, YouTubers with uh, powerful rear hubs, they have like custom brackets for torque arms instead of the ones that you can just buy. And a torque arm just prevents the... <coughs> just prevents the degrading of your bottom or of the uh, axle mounts for your rear wheel. And you know, it transfers that rotational stress more directly to a stronger part of the bike, which is the frame. So, yeah, I would have gone with a rear hub. Um, you know, gotten the whole regenerative braking. Replace the, you know, if I were to get a 50, yeah, I probably could only get a 1500 watt rear hub motor. I replace the, usually they come with 48 volt controllers. I replace that controller with a 72 volt, uh, you know, decent amperage controller. And I would, I think I would have been a little bit up and running a little bit faster, had a little bit less chain alignment issues. Know, the chain falling off the bike or falling off the, the drive spindle or the drive chain ring and everything like that. Um, but you know, it's, I mean, I'm so, I'm so happy with this system and again, like, I like to support uh, bike parks who makes this. They've been in the motorized gas bike business for quite some time. Uh, providing shift kits for the gas, you no, know, the motorized gas bicycles. Yeah, so FYI, I'm just going around 14 miles per hour in top gear. There's a pretty, I'm not sure you can hear it, but it's a, there's a decent headwind. And this is what happened, I mean, this is just common for Wisconsin, especially on these open roads. There's no, there's nothing really, especially now, there's really nothing to break the wind. So this headwind is, it's like going up a s steep hill all the time. It's, you know, it's, it has its advantages and disadvantages. Obviously the advantage when I come back, I'll be going like 40 or 30 plus, maybe. But going there, I'm at 15, 14. Because I don't want to overdraw. I don't want to overdraw the battery for nothing. Because I, I mean, yeah, if I was in a rush, if I needed to get to where I wanted to go, I would choose it and maintain like a maybe 20, 30 mile per hour ride there. But yeah, this is only a 16 amp hour battery, and the cells are older cells, older technology. So, which leads me to what I want to do, and so originally when I planned this out, I was thinking a rear hub motor and a 49cc uh, HS1, it's called Hawk, the motor's a 
is a Honda clone, a 49cc Honda clone called the Hoshin 142F, or more appropriately, people what people in the motorized bicycle industry know as the HS 142F. So it's a 49cc four stroke motor, produces around 1,500, 2,000 kilowatts at peak torque or peak power. I was able to get that as a mid, as a dual system to a rear hub motor. So how that would work was I would just use the electric motor to get up to speed. Okay, so let, let's talk about the disadvantages and advantages of So there's a huge hill right here at the moment with headwind. So yeah, this is gonna be painful. Let's just talk before, well, on the way back I'll talk about the exact plans, but now let's talk about the differences between a gas bike. So a gas motorized bike and a electric motorized bike, commonly referred to as an e-bike. So, and this obviously this depends on your battery and you know how much money your bike is. So this is a budget e-bike, so let's just go with that. It's bu just a budget, overall budget. So a gas motorized bicycle, they come in two flavors, two strokes or four strokes. So typically the two stroke engine are not as reliable as the four stroke, just because of how the casting materials and the molding materials and the tolerances that they have on those two strokes. Um, so I'll only play with or only talk about the four strokes uh, just from my experiences. So the four stroke as I mentioned is a Honda clone and Honda is are known to be extremely reliable. I had a 49cc HS 142F for around two to three years and I put over 6,000 miles on that thing and it was still running well when I sold it. You know, a, a very good um, motor. The only problem was all the other components. You know, the transmission, the gear or the gear reduction box, you know, the rear chain ring or you no know, it wasn't jack shaft or or shift kitted to the actual spindle the the actual bottom brackets and components of the bike so there was a separate gear on the left. Um, but so since I'm almost there I'll say that a gas bike requires a little bit more maintenance especially if you have a two stroke. Four strokes even then you need to change the oil and make sure everything is tight and lubed. Um, you know make sure you have gas in it obviously. Uh, make sure the spark plugs, make sure the compression everything is good, everything is tight. Um, you know there's a lot of work, things that could go wrong. On an electric bike, especially a rear hub, not so much. I mean for my 500 watt e-bike the only ever problems I had was just if my, you know things that I caused my connections were not as good maybe they my wiring was not the greatest nothing ever from the actual e-bike itself since it was a rear hub direct you know brushless motor yeah nothing ever from the actual motor you know the controller it was a really cheap kit too it was like 120 bucks for the uh, 500 watt uh, kit with a, with a throttle half throttle and a 20 amp controller 36 volt 20 amp controller uh, nothing ever wrong with it perfect you know very reliable extremely reliable uh, and the 42 and the 49 F again very reliable as well because it's a Honda clone but I had transmission boxes break down. I had to MacGyver the box back to work again. Um, you no, know, I had to chain derailments. 
But I have chain leaping from the from the drivetrain, almost getting stuck in the rear wheel, and fish tailing me, almost crashed there. Uh, this is a whole. There's a lot of things that could go wrong. Um, okay, but I'm actually here, so I will continue this conversation when I'm done <coughs> running uh, the errands that I have to do. And there's a couple errands I have to do. Okay, what's this car wants to do? So I'll get back. To, so let me go park this. Uh, anyway, so but the gas motors. It's gas. It takes seconds, especially with uh, such a low, small engine and uh, fuel tank with like the 49cc motor. It takes seconds to refill, and I'm going again. Um, okay, and it has really great mileage too. I probably probably around like oh, oops probably around like 80 to 100 miles per gallon doesn't give off I know the whole thing about electric bikes is being more greener but those motors they don't give off a lot of emissions they're extremely gas efficient uh, with electric you have to recharge it and you could speed you could speed recharge it but then you lose some capacity. But anyway, I'll, I'll talk when I get back, get out of here.